you spent, I, I, like you said, a good 15 years on the Howard Stern show, but then the pandemic hits, it hits New York City extremely hard yeah. um, in early, mid 2020. And then you, we talked about it, you moved to Alabama, which is where, you know, as you know, we're currently recording this show. Um, and then you started your own fantastic podcast, The Shuley Show. Was it always a dream of yours to kind of have your own comedy show? Or was that something that developed during the course of time, maybe with, with Howard Stern? Or did you just see this as an opportunity when, it, when you had to, you know, take the break from New York City? Well, you know, I, I think uh, a couple things. One, I always felt like I wanted to try and do something like, you know, a podcast. I see a lot of my comedian friends are doing it. It's a great way to work out material without having to go out on stage. Um, and it's a great way to build a fan base. You know, when I started, the way you sold tickets was you put flyers on cars. And we had this awful, you know, a thousand flyers equals 10 tickets sold, maybe. Right. You know how what a pain in the ass it is to put a thousand flyers on cars. So now with podcasts, you're, you there the cars are coming to you right like you don't have to guess you don't have to guess i hope this guy shows up or that guy if they found your show if they subscribed if they donated to your patreon whatever they're if you're coming to their town they're coming to see you so it's a great way to build a fan base plus you know if i make this move seven eight years ago six five years ago maybe I think my only natural move is to find another gig in radio. Whereas now, you know, the, the, the field is wide open, right? Like everybody. Yeah. And it's saturated with a lot, of, but it's also, that all depends on what you're bringing to the table. If you want to kind of not stand out from everything else that's out there, you're not gonna, but if you come with something, you know, original and, and, be yourself. And I learned from, you know, not only Howard, but uh, three of the greats. Uh, I worked for Howard. I did a lot of stuff with Jay Thomas. I, I was his comedic sidekick wow. for many years. Uh, and then uh, Scott Farrell, a sports guy. I, I spent a lot of time on his airwaves. I remember listening to Jay way, way, way back when, when I lived in upstate New York, because the signal would reach up. I think it was WPLJ. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember listening to him when my dad, before Howard came to L.A., I would listen to Jay on Power 106 FM in L.A. And I remember his billboards. And I mean, think about that. Howard, Jay, uh, Dice, Howie Mandel, all, all those four alone are guys that I watched as a kid going, wow, like I would love to be, you know, I was at a thing Don Rickles was doing. Rickles is another guy I kind of met face to face when I was a kid. He was he was filming a bit for a special he did called uh, Buy This Tape, You Hockey Puck. And <laughs> and he was at Universal Studios in a sandwich board sign. And it said insults one dollar. And there was a line around the damn corner of people with dollars in their hands and he would hand him the dot he go thank you sweetheart the bus for the homes picking you up right over here get over here you know and just screaming at everybody so like all these things that I, I feel like if you're truly passionate about these things in life and you truly believe uh in yourself and you do the work like you can you can accomplish and i'm not a dreams can come true guy believe me but I, you know, I've lived so many already, man. It's, it's, it's wild. So you get your first show recorded and out into the world. What were the thoughts going through your head as you waited to see what the response would be? The first show I wasn't worried about. The first show was, uh, I was worried about show two and three and four. I knew everybody was going to show up for show one because I had left the show. Mm -hmm. The show, the show was not going to talk about it. That's just how Howard operates, and that's fine. Um, but people will want to know. So for me, it's like, yeah, episode one, they're all going to tune in. It's going to be the best numbers, you know, for a while. How do you keep them for ep till episode 10, till episode 20, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I was concerned about is where do we go after we tell the story? What do we do? What are my strengths? What can I lean into? What should I stay away from? You know, I've I've done... You know, in comedy, when you work with somebody, 
let's say a headliner takes you on the road with them, right? And you're touring with this headliner for a couple months. Whether you know it or not, and, and it's a subconscious thing for the most part, you start, your cadence starts to mirror that comic, right? So another thing for me was like, I've been on this tour for 15 years. I also have to be careful of not doing the same stuff I did on uh, for this. You know, it's like I had to kind of relearn broadcasting and this time I'm on my own. I'm not chiming in with stuff and somebody else is steering the ship. And yeah, it was a lot easier, but you know, I wanted more. I wanted more of a responsibility. I wanted to grow more on air and, and take more chances and, and open up more. It seems like the response has been fantastic. And what has it meant, you know, for you to see an audience responding this way to your very own show? It's great, man. I, you know, I, I really, I believe in me. That's why I took this chance, but you, you never know how it's going to be received and the response and still continues. I mean, we're in, I think we're close. I think we're over 80 episodes. We're gearing up close to a hundred episodes. I think we're almost at a million download. You know, we're doing just under a hundred thousand downloads a month, uh, which is, you know, again, 80 plus episodes. There's people that have been doing podcasts for 10 years that don't get on the charts, don't have those kind of numbers, don't get sponsors. So f for me, like, the fact that it's working is great. And it, and it just puts a ton of wind in my sails to keep it going. How do we take it to the next level? What's, you know, coming up, doing this podcast with my buddy, James, you know, this comedian podcast about bombing. Uh, we do another podcast, me and a few other comics called uh, the miserable men show where uh, I tell people it's like the view. If the view was uh, cavemen, Neanderthal, uh, <laughs> Of telling cavemen it's myself the reverend bob levy who you may know from stern uh, uh um days of the past uh another comedian mike morse who used is a roast writer wrote a lot of roast jokes for comedy central roast and lampanelli and uh, another guy mark burns who uh works with uh, animal regulation and we goof on him non-stop because of that did you kind of know that this was the plan i remember there was, um, you were called, you called it. I don't know if you called in or they were chatting with you, but Jimmy Kimmel was there. Robin was there. Howard was there and they were pressing you. They were pressing you on the move to Alabama and busting your, your chops and saying, well, what are you going to do when we all come back? What are you going to do when we all come back? Did you already know that this was kind of a, something you were thinking in the back of your head? Maybe that well, maybe I'm just going to stay down here and do this. And maybe I'm never coming back. I knew in March when they sent us home from work and said, go home and don't come back till we tell you, I told my wife, I put, I'll never forget. I put my work badge on the, on the counter. I put my Metro card on the counter. I said, we are never. And I looked at her. I said, we are never going back into that studio ever again. She said, what do you mean? I said, this guy, Howard is a germaphobe on a good day. There's a frigging pandemic going on. We're never going to see him again. We're never going to be in that studio again. And I knew that. So that's why we started, you know, when people started trying to break into our apartment building, that's when I'm like, OK, it's time to move. So I checked with management. I asked numerous times, does it matter where home is since we're working from home? No, not at all. So can you share at all what you've got planned for the Shuli show this year? Oh, my God. We have a ton planned. We got some great guests uh, in store this year. We just had a great uh, episode with Lisa Lampanelli, Jim Florentine. Uh, we're, uh, we're, we're supposed to be having uh, Sebastian Maniscalco is going to come on, Artie Lang, uh, Tom Segura and his wife. Uh, plus, my, uh, I have an FBI, former FBI expert who does stand-up comedy now, uh, Vincent D'Agostino. So and now you're also still headlining across the country and you're going to be here in Mobile, Alabama at the Alabama Music Box towards the end of this month. Um, what can we expect from you when we see you there? Uh, I've never been to Mobile, so you can expect me to keep the car running. <laughs> no, seriously, um, I'm looking to have a great time. I love the people of the South. I say this from the bottom of my heart. Uh, you guys still beat your kids and God bless you for it because you're raising a good crop. 
Okay. I'm going to be honest. I see those. I see them working out there and that's because they don't want to get hit. Good for you. Let it come out, have some fun. Mobile, Alabama, uh, doing Lafayette as well, doing uh, Tampa side splitters. You know, you can go to Shalom for uh, any tickets and uh, you can go on uh, Twitter, Instagram. Shalom Shuli is the same thing. And Shalom is a Hebrew word. It means hello, goodbye, peace and get them. All right. So there you go. Shuli, thank you so much for being on the show and for all the laughs. Ladies and gentlemen, Shuli Igar. And I hope you come to the show. <laughs>